Okay, so now I want to describe to you in general terms what the rational zero theorem says. It basically tells you how to write down a list of candidates for rational zeros. Those would be zeros that would be fractions, rational numbers. And it would give you a complete list of candidates. They all may not be zeros. In fact, none of them may be. But if you have a rational zero, if you have a fraction that will be the zero of a polynomial, it will appear somewhere on this list. So in fact, it gives you a way of producing a finite list of rational numbers where if there's a zero to your polynomial, it'll be somewhere there. So here is the rational zero theorem. Suppose I have a polynomial, and I'm going to write down now a very general polynomial. So it's going to have some sort of coefficient. I'm going to call the coefficient, let's say, a sub n times x to the n. So this just means this is the coefficient on the x to the n term. It's just a number. Don't think of it as anything but just a number, but it's the number that I put in front of the x to the n term. Then I have some other coefficient, let's say a n minus 1. That's in front of the x to the n minus 1 term. I'm just writing down a general polynomial. And it goes on for a while until finally I get to a1 times x plus a0. So there's a generic polynomial has a coefficient times x to the n plus some other coefficient x to the n minus 1 all the way down to something times x plus a number. It turns out that a rational number, so a fraction, p over q, is going to be a 0 of f of x. And this is in lowest terms. So I'm assuming you've already canceled away all the terms. So this is in lowest terms. So if you have this, and if this is a 0, then it will be the case that p, p is a factor of a naught, so that's this term, and q is a factor of a n. So what that says, sort of in English, is that you just look at the first coefficient, the first number, the number that's appearing in front of the highest power of x, and the last number, the number that's just appearing by itself. And if you're going to have a rational number that's a 0 of the polynomial, so you plug that in, you get 0. If you're going to have that, then it must be the case that p is a factor of that last term, some factor, and q will be some factor of the first term. So all you got to do is look at all the factors of the last term, all the factors of the first term, look at all the possible quotients you can make top over bottom, and you have a list of all the possible candidates. Let's try an example. So an example would be, consider, and this is a real easy one. Again, I'm trying to illustrate it with an easy example so you can sort of see the thing, and we can get sort of on solid footing. So let's look at 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Now I'm telling you right now, we could actually factor this and find the zeros directly. But let's not do that. Let's just see this method in, in process. And then you can see how to do it with even harder examples. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at this 3 and write down all the possible factors of 3. Well, all the possible factors of 3, those are just plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. That's it. Can't factor 3 any other way. Now let's factor 2. Well, the, all the possible ways of factoring 2 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Those are all the factors. So therefore, a complete list of all the possible candidates for rational roots of this polynomial are going to be these numbers over these numbers. So let's see what that would be. Well, one possibility would be plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 1. Okay, So what would that be? That would be plus or minus 1. So there's one candidate. Then I could have plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 2, which would be plus or minus a half. So there's another candidate. Then I could have plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1. So that's just plus or minus 3. And then I could have plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 2. So that would be plus or minus 3 over 2. So how many candidates do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, because of the signs. So I have eight candidates. If this is going to have any rational zeros, they will appear in this list. But there may be none. You have to understand, none of these may work. But if some of them do, only at most two will, because this, of course, is a quadratic, has two roots. So now you can actually test the values by just plugging in. Right? Take 1 and plug it in here and see what happens. Do you get 0? If I plug in 1, I see 2 plus 7 plus 3. 
2 plus 7 plus 3 is not 0. So I know that 1 is not a root, not a 0. We can ignore it. What about the minus 1? Well, then this would be a 2 minus 7 plus 3. 2 minus 7 plus 3 is not 0. So in fact, these two values, plus or minus 1, even though they're candidates, turn out not to be roots. Okay? What about the plus or minus a half? Well, let's try, let's try plus a half. If you put in plus a half here, a half squared is a fourth times 2 is a half. So I have a half plus 7 halves plus 3. A half plus 7 halves plus 3 certainly isn't going to combine to give 0, so that's no good. What about minus a half? If I put in minus a half, when I square that, I see a fourth times 2 is a half. So I see a half. Then I see minus 7 halves plus 3. Now that's not so clear. Let's figure that out. So what is, what is 1 half, that's what I get here, minus 7 halves plus 3. How many, how many halves is 3? Well, that's 6 halves. So what's 1 half minus 7 halves plus 6 halves? That's 0, right? Because I have 7 halves minus 7 halves. So in fact, I found a rational root. Minus 1 half is actually a rational root. You see, one of those candidates turned out to actually be a rational root. Neat. And if you were to keep going, you would see here in this next example that minus 3 is also a rational root. And the other ones are not. So in fact, I found both roots, both zeros. So the zeros, they're rational. One's at minus 1 half, and one's at minus 3. So there you have it. So in fact, these always give you the candidates. You can always make a complete list. Now, of course, this, this person we could have factored directly 2x plus 1 times x uh, plus 3. So in fact, this is one of these guys I could have factored, and we could have gotten the roots that way. But you can see how this works. I just take these guys here, the, the constant terms, factor all the possible factors. Those are the numerators. Take, all the take the coefficient on the highest term, write all the possible factors, take all the quotients like that, check each and every one. If any of them is going to be a rational zero, it's going to be on this list. You can find it, even if the polynomial is a very complicated one, not just a simple one like this. That's all there is to it, and that's called the rational zero theorem.